Alfredo Figueroa at the Blythe Airport at 7 o'clock in the morning. Standing right there in the, in the second side of CC Meat and Coco Pili. Coco in Nahuatl means hurt. Pili means our Lord. And this is the site where the Blythe Solar Panel projects are proposed to be built. To the Sacred Conversation, and I am Daniela Haskara. Welcome, Robert Landal. I'm so excited to see you today. And Robert is a storyteller, or let me say a visual storyteller, very talented documentary filmmaker. Good to see you. You know, it's early here. I You've know. Done what people can't do for me. You know, they wake me up early. And they wake me up early. <laughs> no one else can do that. <laughs> so I'm very excited to see you after all this time again. So happy to be here with you. Now here's the, here's the minute. So you will notice. Oh, it's a line. Look at that line. line. Black see? on one side. Black on one side and blonde on the other side. Yeah. The blonde represents what? It represents Heaven. male. The dark side where we're stepping on, we're stepping on what is represents Mother Earth. Represents the woman. Represents night. So, so I wonder if there are pentacles right No, what it is is a, like an altar symbol. As a young man, I didn't know all this. Gradually, that's why we say loke na wake, like the fingers in the hand. Among all, we do all for the benefit of all. Different sizes, different shapes, all together in the trunk of the human race. How long has it been? I haven't seen you. 2010. Wow. Around 12 years. We haven't seen wow. you. You look exactly the same, which is Thank unusual. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to beat time. <laughs> well, good. It's all that juicing. Get back in touch with you and having um, this conversation is, is really uh, very mm -hmm. helpful and very inspiring. Mm -hmm called you just the evening before your birthday how lovely is that you know on the solstice yeah. it's a very important day that's, that's been something i've been internalizing and working with you know mm -hmm. the transition and um the stopping point you know if you will where nature takes a pause you know our days get balanced and then we emerge on the other side and there's always a wonderful large question what do we do on the other side most people don't have this opportunity to remake everything and remake themselves because they're not conscious of it. But once you become conscious of it, I think it's very important. And we left each other in the desert, you know, metaphorically speaking. And uh, we were, you know, connecting with tribal peoples in the Mojave Desert along the Colorado River. Well, I remember driving around in the car with you out in the desert with Alfredo and we would stop and he would point at a mountain and say, you see, this looks like a crocodile. And I, go, <laughs> you know? and I remember getting out of the car with the camera and a tripod and shooting pictures of that little mountain range and the sky and these clouds in the sky. And it was so beautiful. It was overwhelmingly beautiful. I mean, the color blue, the sense of space. Uh, and I really honestly, didn't really fully understand everything there, but I was catching a glimpse of something big, you know, and, and where was I, where were we in this landscape? And he pointed that out to us. Ome means to yo for your lot. Your lot means your heart. It's often my heart. So the heart, the place of the two hearts is Ome Yokan, where 
Ole Miss, they are recite. Flying in the car and you were shooting, shooting, I, shooting, or bouncing along. Sounds, on the dirt. sounds just like me. <laughs> mm -hmm. People always say, can we go on a walk now? <laughs> And, we keep and then Alfredo was in the back seat, and you go, oh, you turn the camera, and you'd be talking really fast. You're like just right on everything. You didn't want to lose any moment. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's. But, you know, okay. Daniela, maybe you can slow down and use the tripod or something. You know, that's very much uh, sounds like me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, fun. It was really fun, and it was really beautiful, <laughs> and you know, it was inspiring. <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of fun in that um, uh, journey with you and doing starting that documentary on that film. I really appreciate it. We know there's a Mother Earth. We're standing on Mother Earth and we're the guardians of Mother Earth. What I saw across this landscape close to the Blythe and Taglios, was hundreds of shapes, patterns, and images, signifying importance by the sheer weight of the rock moved alone. I think stories are the basis of everything, and we can call it up by a lot of different names. I mean, sometimes in the business world, we say it's marketing or it's public relations or this or that. And, you know, I do that, you know, in my life professionally, but, but really it's storytelling and it's about becoming inspired by the story and finding a personal connection to it and and maybe a global connection that's what gets me going in the morning yeah yeah and and taking those stories um deeply to heart as i can uh, feel you do it it's in your sacred sites in your land so everywhere that we have these sacred sites this is a duality but you all have to understand courts represents the male Dark represents the female. This is Chiss. This is Chiss. I'm a minor. Oh, excellent. excellent. No, I got We gotta let the people know. Otherwise, what are we gonna do? It's just gonna be. They're gonna destroy. And then so you know, like I said, uh, before we were worried about the uh, roaders, and now, you know, yeah. uh, who the people are. And like you said, there's an there's an energy. I've noticed that some people, when I'm introducing myself or we, we began a conversation, like you mentioned, you know, with the tribal people, especially the tribal people, you know, I'll look at them and uh, I'll see that they're looking at my heart. You know, and maybe to see if I'm still breathing. <laughs> but there's something like about that, yeah. that there's a mm -hmm. the connection is here and you have to allow time for that. I mean, it's just normal what humans do. It's nothing very. Yeah unusual but it's it's like a check-in emotionally are you here with us are you present yeah are we talking well or responsibly are we listening those kinds of things and a lot of people when they think of tribal people in the united states it, they romanticize that difficult for them to get through all the the haze of what other people have in their minds yeah but I, it was it was easier for me for some reason. I just took it, you know, in a simple way. How did you get connected with that native uh, tribe? And what was the name again of the, the native tribe? The correct name is Nuwu. Nuwu. Now I've noticed with other tribes, they begin the names of the tribal um, community, the heritage with the word Nu, you know, which means people, mm -hmm. the people, Nu Wu. But Nuwu. the mm -hmm. Spanish name, the name the Spanish imposed on them was uh, Chemawebi, you know, sometimes translated as yeah. Chemawebu. You know, they, it's, a, it's a messed up thing because someone else comes and puts a name on you that isn't your name and it's a conquering nation you know it could be the united states or it could be right. in our case spain or mexico mm. this this history has been a history of domination and subjugation and it's important that's why the heart is so important right mm. yeah so it doesn't work if you're non-native like I am to be one of the subjugators, one of the conquistadores, you know, no one wants that, you know, and sometimes we just do that with our ego. So 
you know, that kind of connection is less ego, more presence. Absolutely. I got there because we had a friend, uh, Mike Boyd. Remember Mike Boyd? Mike uh, was the president of a nonprofit in Santa Cruz, California, and that nonprofit had filed um, lawsuits to uh, protect the environment in the state of California. And one of them was very famous because in San Francisco, there was a major power plant operated by PG&E, and it was a major polluter. It was in the Hunter's Point area, which is, I wouldn't say predominantly black these days, but a traditionally black community. Mm -hmm. Going back to World War II and, you know, they roughly, I would say, imported, you know, black labor from the south into California to build ships for the war effort uh, in World War II. And uh, so this was a case of environmental justice, uh, environmental non-equity, if you will, uh, more conquering mentality. And so... Uh, in other words, we need to produce power here. and We're really not looking at what happens to the neighborhood. That was, you know, the operating principle of the era. Mike's nonprofit was able to file a lawsuit. And also he was instrumental with the Hopi people because the Hopi Tribal Council had changed the younger generation and the younger generation uh, brought in representatives of Peabody Coal and supporters of Peabody Coal onto the Tribal Council. So they were co-opted and um, the coal company was, you know, monitoring their opposition to this coal development in the, in the natural desert, which is so important to them. And that, you know, affected the water supply and everything. So Mike was very instrumental in doing that. He said one day to me, you are making films on Native American people. Why don't you go down to Blythe, California and meet Alfredo Figueroa? So that was leading that, you. That to... was the beginning when we left. Right? Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of the film. And we just said, "Let's go." You know how oh, it yeah. goes. Jump into things. I'm, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Most agencies feel that they can just buy their way through everything, and that's not true. You cannot replace a sacred site once you destroy it, especially the ones that giant antagonists or Cocopili. As a response to climate change, big environmental groups like the Sierra Club and NRDC agreed to support renewable energy development in the desert, regardless of the consequences. When you hear me pray, you'll hear us say uh, avimpa, and avimpa in Chimwebi is, is uh, white clay water, and uh, that's where the word Ivan Paul comes from, avimpa. And I really appreciated that um, interaction with you, and then I went on to finish that film. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of filmmaking going on in these 10 years. You know, I wanted to create a a legacy of my work and uh, go deeper into it and understand it and understand my audiences and work to create change. It's very important now in 2023 for me to take those things that I've learned and, you know, re restate them through my film work, my artistic work and so on. And this, this was a beautiful uh, time in helping the Native American Indians to protect their sacred sites. I mean, there was so much beauty in in the landscape. And when they were walking us around in those mountains, I remember very vividly mm -hmm. that that was a very, very sacred time. So they removed big uh, black rocks on top, on the hard mesa surface, and they revealed the white caliche. Caliche is like limestone, it's white. So you can see uh, the images and they placed the, the rocks that they removed, they placed them on the side to outline the image that they were trying to portray. So that's what entaglo means. It's a word that, like I said, it was applied, but the, 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 the scientific word is geoglyph. Once they trust you and when you can bridge the gap, be one of them and be, and they're feeling your heart. It's not about capturing anything but that authenticness and, all, and, and the beauty of something what comes deeply from the heart to wanting to share something so authentically. Isn't that what makes the, our film, the filmmaking? And you are totally, you, you're making beautiful films, Robert. So I've been watching them. Thank you. That, that, that is so 
special to capture just the pure moment of life. There's something beyond that too, how it started, but up to that point, all it's saying is that there's two energies that came out, that positive and negative came out, they came together and they created the world. And the world is made up like that. This here, for instance, all of this skin or all this being is uh, energy. Uh, this flesh might go, but our energy that started this thing is going to go on. In our ways, when, when things were created, they were created for the people uh, specifically. And that when you know animals died and, and or became... And when they were people, when they became animals that people would use, it was for the people. And the plants, they gave themselves for the people too. And, and uh, we just respect that, you know, and, and uh, try to keep that to alive and keep that together. Any story, what touches me and in inspires me, there is no, there is no hesitation. It has to, has to be in the moment, it has to be now. now the result of the 12 years, personally for me, was I, I made that film, which was a very difficult yeah. process because it involved um, energy development on sacred lands and companies, in fact, from Germany and Spain and uh, Israel uh, came over and received gigantic subsidies in the billions of dollars. And then, you know, here we are, you know, individuals making a film that impacts the business that impacts the business of international energy firms. And, and there were $10 billion at stake. So it's not often that if you're making a film, you realize you're in the front line of something that's about $15 billion worth of other people's money. So it became a little dangerous, if you will. Bright Source Energy commenced construction of the Ivanpah Solar Electric Generating System. Well, there in our lives, we were Born and raised here in Blythe. The transformational project serves as a cornerstone of California's and the nation's burgeoning clean energy economy. We always knew that how they had mistreated us. It was a very exposed position, you know. I'm very happy with it. It had uh, a distribution in theaters and universities and communities uh, all over the West in five states Oregon, California. Actually, South Dakota, Nevada, we had a premiere in Las Vegas, particularly meaningful and interesting and uh, surprising. Uh, there was a lot of power, political power. Uh, Senator Harry Reid from Nevada, who was very powerful. And so the, some of these establishment figures didn't really like what, you know, I was doing. Yeah, you were in the forefront and a critical input is, is always uh, difficult to to stand up to you know mm -hmm. that is you just one person yeah. who you're an artist with an old car and a camera <laughs> yeah. you know maybe you and, got a credit card. you're lucky yeah. right? and you're standing up for the people and uh, those things can also get a little dangerous i can see that mm -hmm. and i want to also point out you didn't go into that um, side story of protecting the sacred sides of the native american in right so for me, the pieces were so ancient and so beautiful. And right. I was I was just astonished how big they were. And um, when we were taking the walk around the mountain. Here we see this arrow, this knight. And this arrow is pointing straight to where this, that mountain is right there. See that mountain is? What is the name of that mountain? Clark, Clark Mountain. It's Clark Mountain? There are okay. Five springs in there. There's some hot springs there. Okay. Sacred sites and mysteries are super important. Well, it's been a long time. It was the era yeah. back in the 70s, you know, of yeah. uh, Carlos Castaneda. And I mean, I read, you know, Castaneda and I read Daniken and it was really interesting. A book called Chariots of the Gods. Eric von Daniken. Thesis yeah. was that it was of extraterrestrial origin. Von Daniken wrote about what are called geoglyphs. There are larger drawings on the land. A petroglyph, petro, you know, rock. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Smaller, they're on rocks usually. Uh, they have a mapping function. They'll tell you where water is. I know how to read them better now. You know, I've been, had 12 years to learn the language, if, if you will. Excellent. And 
So they're generally place markers for specific reasons. The geoglyphs are much larger. There are uh, drawings on the ground that are uh, sometimes two, 200 feet long. Uh, I've heard that you can see them from space, yeah. uh, which is interesting. And it's difficult to imagine how a small group of people could create gigantic movements of you know, surface rocks to, to reveal this, uh, what they call caliche uh, underneath, which is a lighter uh, color. So they scrape away the rocks on the surface and, and reveal a white uh, base. You know, your friend that you mentioned who was walking in the desert with us was, was named Chewy, Chewy Figueroa. Oh, Chewy, okay. And so he said recently they're 35,000 years old. And that comes through and it forms these images. Cocopili, you know, on coffee mugs and tourist items, and people don't think about where it comes from, where this image comes from. It's just, oh, that's cute, right? It's a very, you know, Cocopili is half insect, half man. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that all species are important in the insect and the, and the person, the human are are together in their mission on earth and they, you know, it's a system. It's a system of nature and intelligence and connection between species. And, you know, certainly, you know, if you have an image of a human slash insect that has something to do with humility, you know, the lowly insect and the mighty human being are, you know, more or less the same in the eyes of, you know, a creator or a god if you want to talk that way yeah by 2013 several large-scale renewable energy projects had been permitted some near 10,000 acres in size overall over 19 million acres are up for lease wasn't also this uh, part of a demonstration which were rising at the time when they were wanted to destroy some of those, uh, yeah. taking a highway through them. It was the solar energy. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, solar, solar is good. What's the problem? Yeah. You know, it was a political issue as well. Well, the problem is that solar uh, panels got cheaper through this whole process and Germany led the way, you know, in rooftop solar and integrating that you know into the national grid and the national energy supply but the united states went for you know the the big mega projects so the assumption was made we have a big desert so we're going to invite all these companies over and give them billion dollar you know subsidies and allow them to build and uh, because it was so exciting to them you know in goldman sachs you know everybody was lining up with their powerpoints and wanting to you know, make a billion dollars or so in about six months. And um, they didn't ask a lot of questions and they didn't gain a lot of knowledge about where they were and who was there before and what was on the land and what's the problem building here and uh, those kinds of things. So it was a sad uh, era of greed. And um, I'm proud that Alfredo and I had an impact and managed to stop four large global projects. Solar Millennium uh, wanted to build uh, nearby and around it and on top of it and everything else and build roads. And, you know, they, they built a road over uh, another geoglyph. And I was able to write you know, uh, an article for the newspaper. And, and uh, after that, uh, 
I started to work on a public relations campaign to slow this down. And that campaign went around the world uh, with, by AP to, to 150 news outlets. So it had major impact. The title of some of the videos I was producing at that time, one of them was Solar Millennium Builds a Road Atop Ancient Geoglyphs. That was the title of the video. And if you remember, the internet was a little younger than that. So if you put a video like that up, you know, on the internet, then people are going to search for Solar Millennium and there just weren't that many references. So they'd wind up, the investors would wind up with the video, Solar Millennium Builds a Road on, Atop Ancient Geoglyphs, which is obviously illegal. They just weren't very sophisticated, you know, with their outreach or their communication. And they were lying, uh, essentially. I mean, the statement mm -hmm. was made that the Cocopili geoglyph was created by uh, Moonies, you know, the Moonies, mm -hmm. Sun Young Moon, the Korean religious group, you know, in, in the 1970s. Like they were just bored one day and they went out and created a 200 foot rock drawing, you know, because it was cool. You know, well, that would, be, would have been impossible for one thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a difference between being something being created in 1977 versus something being created 35,000 years ago. So it was pretty head spinning, you know, what was going on and how the lies were coming out, you know, to support the development. But eventually over time, uh, uh, it became clear to me as a filmmaker that uh, all of this was far deeper than I ever imagined. And that, that was the challenge, you know, after that point of, of getting into this idea of time and people and culture and and you know it was related to the uh, Aztec culture uh, in Mexico migrating back and forth between Mexico and California that's a deep story it was really a invitation to uh, a lot of unknown mysteries and 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 very deep uh, realities and uh, connections with people like Chewy that I mentioned on that basis. And, you know, we became very good friends. We know each other very well. And, you know, I'm just very happy and honored to have been a part of it. And then through the filmmaking, I was uh, presented with this blanket, which is why I'm wearing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, after, offered uh, a lifetime achievement award from the Tulalip tribes in Washington, which is a large uh, tribe outside of Seattle and very influential in the Pacific Northwest and they have a film festival every year so if you if you have a film that wins an award a big award or something like that they'll, they'll present you with a blanket and wrap it around you to take care of you and make you warm like one of the family Beautiful. and that's that's why I'm wearing this today because I wanted to share that experience and I've never I've never worn it before because it's an honor and not usually you do this in a ceremony so I'm, I'm uh, thinking this is our ceremony. El abuelito Arturo Figueroa, who is uh, continuing with the spirit of our ancestors and was able to, to work for this moment and bring us all together from the, from the four corners, from the four direct tribes out of the area. You dedicated yourself to something not really knowing where it's going to take you. And oh yeah. I, aren't oh, those yeah. the most beautiful ways of being in life? And in some way to having that flexibility, you know, to growing with the project or growing with the people and seeing yeah. where does it take you, right? Well you could call it flexibility or you could call it terror. <laughs> I mean it's the <laughs> the the feeling of starting a film and having worked on it for about a year and still not knowing where you're going or what the ending <laughs> is how you're going to survive it or pay for it or any of those things is, is you know there's a good amount of art, art terror we call it you know? it's art like, terror how did I get into this <laughs> well it's definitely you're definitely passionate about what you're doing otherwise you would have stopped and dropped it out the way <laughs> well that so, was impossible you know that you were there so what do you yeah. do if you have to yeah. give you their, their honor and you know you you are having you're having a relationship on that basis you can't exactly. just leave yeah and then you suddenly before you know it, you're totally committed. <laughs> right, before you know it, you're suing two branches of government, five companies, you know, that's what happened with us. We we stopped right. the project because we sued them and it didn't 
the lawsuits didn't stop the United States government, but the awareness that people had stood up and that tribes had stood up and that a couple of people had stood up and created, you know, a, 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 an argument, really a legal argument that was valid and important and threw everything in doubt and cast public uh, scrutiny on their practices, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. That's where, that's where it went. And that's why it was so difficult, you know, when you, you know, and the, I was not a plaintiff, plaintiff in the lawsuits, you know, Mike Boyd said, wouldn't you like to be a whistleblower because you're never going to work again and never get, no one's ever going to hire you again after this. So why don't you go for this whistleblower status and get a stipend, you know, because of the punishment that they're, they're putting you through. And I said, no, you know, because I was confident, I guess, you know, I was a little younger. I probably would have like just taken the money now, but you know, um, I was confident and I thought, no, I I'm going to, I'd like to be the, I'm the public relations, you know, Mm -hmm. department i'm the public relations company you know for this effort and alfredo and i agreed on that and he said okay you're the public relations man and i said right on good well i don't want to speak for you right but i want to help you with all these media interactions and and show people that what's going on you know with the camera and that kind of thing and so i you know i needed his support there too you know and that's how we came to work together really in a professional mm -hmm. manner, a very disciplined, uh, professional manner. And his family, the Figueroa family, <clears throat> had been, uh, work, had worked with uh, famous labor leader, Cesar Chavez, uh, in the United States. <clears throat> and Chavez led the Great Boycott <clears throat> and the Lettuce Boycott in California, which were the two largest actions of social uh, activism in the history of California. So his legacy was deep and his skill sets were deep and his colleagues were legends. He said, in our family, we were trained, you know, we were trained because of this political life to march, right? To march like a little army, like when you're tired and everything's going wrong, you still march. Yeah. So we, we marched, you know, and we joked about it, you know, I mean, he was a little high school football player, you know, back in the time there, and he would uh, have fun with me and say these little football chants, you know, when we would do something good, or we would win a little battle, he'd say, first and 10, let's do it again, it was American football, you know, you have to make 10 yards, and then you get to start over again. If you don't make 10 yards, you have to give the ball to the other team, right? So you always want to make, you know, 10 yards so first first play first and 10 let's do it again you know we made our 10 yards we're marching down the field we're going to score the goal that kind of thing you know you know it was just fun and it was really great to have that kind of you know friendly fun relationship in the middle of such uh, uh, high profile uh, actions This lawsuit you were conducting with the native tribe for five years. How did that turn out? I wanted to be dramatic and I wanted to be effective. And it was a lot of stress, as I said. So one day I went out to Arizona with a colleague to meet with Arizona Public Television in Phoenix. It didn't go well and I came back and I was in a really bad mood and I was staying at the Motel 6 in Phoenix, which was an old motel that was uncomfortable and dirty and so I was in a really bad mood and I wrote the press release and the press release is titled Six Utility Scale Solar Projects Get Holiday Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and it it was written that way because the lawsuit was filed three days after Christmas. So it was a surprise 
It was a holiday surprise from the people. So that was a lot of fun. And that allowed us to gain um, power because it surprised these global energy companies so much that they became ineffective for five months or six months at least while I was putting out a ton of videos criticizing them. So the public relations just just went off the the charts. You know, it, it was just wonderful. And that was where AP carried the story twice around the world. So that was 150 news outlets. It was in the news in Morocco, in Germany, in Spain. It was even in the news in Greenland. <laughs> Good. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So I learned a lot about public relations and doing some of that now, you know. We were in court uh, five years with a platform, with a, a good position and platform and argument. And uh, it was changed a couple of times, you know, what we were claiming. And it became a freedom of religion argument mm, based, yeah. based on the first article of the United States Constitution not based on Indian law, American Indian law, based on the US, US Constitution and the, and the basis of it. But the big Ivanpah project had already been built at that point. And so uh, there were other projects coming along, but what happened with regard to that was that eventually it went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the federal uh, court. And there are three judges that sit and they decide among them and not not one judge so they and they don't know much about this so they had to wrestle with it and you know they said basically what do you what do you want you know this project is already built you know we're not going to tear it down i mean they could have said mm -hmm. tear it down but being practical the judges said we're not going to tear it down you know what do you what do you want do you want a gate do you want to walk through it you know to be on the sacred path. <laughs> so the judges, the three judges on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals came back and said, the project is already built. You know, what can we do? What would be the remedy, you know, in light, in light of the project being built? And would you, do you want a gate, you know, to be able to go through the facility to practice your religion? Is it something like that? And that was where, that was their decision with regard to Ivanpah. But because of all this public relations, there were other projects like Rio Mesa was one and uh, Palin was another, which was to be built right off the corner of Joshua Tree National Park, wow. which is revered by people. And also it's an economic issue because people go there from all around the world to rock climb, they spend money there, you know, they vacation there. And so now you're going to turn it into an industrial facility. No one's gonna to wanna to go there. It's gonna become an ugly industrial town. So because of the high profile, we were able to um, delay, we were able to delay the Solar Millennium Project and eventually they went into bankruptcy in Nuremberg because they couldn't make their, they couldn't develop their you know, initial uh, groundwork that they needed to do to receive this large subsidy. Uh, so delay worked for us very well. The, the, the attorney called me up one day and said, well, now, if you want to go out on the land and lie down in front of the bulldozers, this would be the time. Because it'll mess them up. It'll F them up, you know, and then you'll delay it more. And, and we did that. We went out and uh, Alfredo's uh, friends came from Yuma, one of our dear friends, Miguel Rosas, uh, brought a car, actually a low rider uh, vehicle, you know, and uh, uh, it, was, it was full of uh, uh, Indian and Chicano people uh, who had, some of whom had been uh, just recently released from the jail in Yuma, California. So they were a large, you know, physically large, you know, very imposing group of people with large tattoos in one case of the Aztec calendar on one of their backs. So it was quite a show. 
and the developers didn't know what to do and they drove their cars back and forth real fast and kicked up a lot of dust and took photographs you know <laughs> and we were just and we had kids out there you know we're just like hey, we're good come over and talk to us we're fine you know everything this is our right this is the religion this is why we're here right and, <clears throat> and, and so it was uh a demonstration of really their frustration and ineffectiveness. And many of these projects were just stopped. Um, and in fact, I had called some Wall Street uh, analysts and said, you know, your investors are not going to do very well in this project because the people are opposing you and they're good at it. You know, this is Cesar Chavez group. This is, this is the, uh, the remains of what well, remains of the United Farm Workers that changed the landscape of California years ago. And, and they've stopped numerous projects, including a nuclear dump along the Colorado River at Ward Valley. So you think this is going to be an easy ride. I'm trying to do you a favor by calling up, calling you up and telling you that this is a really bad idea and you're going to lose. So for the sake of your investors, you just might want to let them know that it's not we're going to work out and and it didn't and so we had a group called wed bush an investor group and they you know they changed their recommendation from you know buy to um questionable the project became questionable <laughs> i love these stories Questionable, yeah, censored. <laughs> Still. Yeah, so you know, you're not going to invest fifty thousand dollars or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or you know, yeah, twenty million dollars on it, questionable. Yeah, too many <laughs> impressive men <laughs> showing up. Too many questions. <laughs> too many guys. Too many dudes. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I love, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, men, lots of women. It's a, it's that know, simple, women are it's just that, activist. I'm sorry. I it's you know, that simple. With <laughs> I was getting excited. Power of the people. The power of the people were exactly. I love and it. You, know, you know who they yeah. were, who the the big yeah. winners are, the big winners in this battle against the global energy companies. The hairdresser, the shaman, the old man, the old yaki man. Mm -hmm. You know, the 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 guy from San Francisco, right? <laughs> I mean, we call yeah. it ragtag. It was a ragtag group, right? Yeah, yeah. Censored. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Censored by a few of us, and that's enough. Exactly. So I would say we won. We stopped four large projects. I have writings yeah. to the to that point, and it was me the poor planning you know of the corporate leaders and mindset you know poor planning poor idea poor execution lack of research and uh, i did numerous radio interviews and everything and i said well you know the bureau of land management is not a research university you know they're not really sure how to get the information and there's a private process a public process of public comment and those kinds of things but um but really, the information comes from the applicant companies like Chevron. So Chevron is telling the government, you know, what is correct. Um, so all of that fell apart. Oh, it didn't make sense. Well, congratulations, Robert, that you were so beautifully... Uh, creating impact for a minority have the support and your documentary film in the end was winning um, that argument right. by showing the power of the people by a few against large corporations and, right. and, and winning winning on a with the power of the heart right it was the power of mm -hmm. the, the power of the people the power of the heart and you stand unshakable and you stand powerful with with that determination that something isn't right here and so yes. such a movement um you, you know such a movement is so powerful and i congratulate you to you. having uh, brought that 
that project to such a such a support you know and also mm -hmm. the the consistency and the the power of going through it and you you I'm sure that you had many <laughs> frustrated moments there where you didn't know where it's yeah. going and so it's just standing standing by your belief and standing true to yourself and continuing mm -hmm. continuing on that task that is so so powerful well that's the power of art I mean wouldn't you do that like if you were if you were making a painting that was 10 feet by 20 feet long and you wanted to hang that painting on a wall and it told that the painting told the story and maybe it benefited the community like maybe San Francisco or the mission where there's a lot of murals and the murals record the history of the people there that kind of thing so art has this role of, of visualizing our efforts as as people and communities and and you know we live here you know we're the people who live here hello <laughs> yeah exactly you, know, you might want to talk to us next time you know when it also was nice that in in some way you know you connected with a complete other world than your world with this tribe, this Native American tribe, and you get to know their values and, and their thinking process and their determination. I love that about mm -hmm. connecting with other cultures or, you know, with other like-minded people, but on mm -hmm. from it from, from a different walk of life and i think that that is so powerful when we can do that and it is so re rewarding to your heart yourself that you th those connections are for a lifetime you know yeah um, i i think that is so so beautiful thank you so much robert for your time sure. i had a fantastic uh time with you connecting again on zoom thank you Thank you, Robert.